welcome to the Sea of Green. I would first like to thank you for purchasing this tape with the express hope that it will be as educational and rewarding for you as it has been for us. The object of this tape is to demonstrate in easy to follow video form how you may in 90 quick days begin to grow as many of these lovely female buds as you wish. To maximize production and minimize time and space, they will be grown as 16 to 20 inch single stalk buds. We will take you through step by step from seed to clone to harvest. We work on a two week cloning cycle. Follow the simple instructions and soon you will begin your harvest. Once this happens, you will find, like clockwork, once every two weeks, your harvest rolls in, like a virtual sea of green, wave after continuous wave, a self-perpetuating, endless supply of homegrown herb. Whether you decide to grow a closet-sized hobby or a trailer-sized factory, the process will be the same. Regardless of the size of your project, you will need some standard items and have some standard procedures to follow. This project is in a 50 foot long, 10 foot wide, 8 foot high trailer. Keeping your project on a need to know basis is a must. For that reason we have allowed weeds to grow around the supposed main entrance. It gives the appearance of not being used. We then took off the windows and insulated them on the inside. On the outside we covered the windows with sheet metals to include the door and then painted the entire trailer green to match the color of the barn that we have snuggled it up against over here. The heated or cooled air flows from this end of the trailer and exhausts from this end. Allow me to show you the exhaust duct. This large sheet metal duct allows for ample airflow and conceals the appearance of the exhaust fan. That doesn't look like an exhaust fan, does it? The real entrance to the trailer is a hole cut into the side of the barn which matches up with the back door of the trailer. It is covered by this piece of sheet metal which keeps out the rain and the snow. Let's take a look inside and see just how the project began. The trailer has been separated into two parts. The cloning room, which receives 18 hour of light daily, and this, the fruiting room, which receives 12 hours of light daily. This is our exhaust fan. It is thermostatically controlled and has a variable speed. This gives us the ability to control the amount of airflow through the trailer at all times. This fan is ample size for this room. Here on the left, we have two sets of tables. The tables on bottom are nailed to the floor and to the wall. The tables on the top would be placed on the floor to the right of the room. They all have wheels on their legs to facilitate their easy movement. This will allow easier access to the plants while working with them. We will see more of this in detail later. Over here we have the cloning room. All heating or cooling is done in the cloning room. The air is then conduited through this metal duct with the aid of a fan which is inside the duct and into the fruiting room. Let's take a look inside the cloning room. Besides housing the main electrical box and the main entrance the cloning room is divided into four main sections. On the left, the pre-flowering table and the cloning table. On the right, the areas for the mama and the three-layered cloning rack. This is our electrical box. We try to make our electricity as close to code as possible. This 400 watt metal halide rides on an eight foot moving rail, which services this 10 foot by four foot pre-flowering table. The clones are placed on this table for two weeks growing to the height of 10 to 12 inches where they are then placed in the flowering room. 
The 400 watt light has a ballast hanging from the roof as all ballasts would be. They have their own outlet and timer as do the rails. An oscillating fan on the roof helps to keep a more even temperature in this room. This 400 watt metal halide and this eight foot moving rail service this eight foot by four foot area which will house our mamas. We will take 300 clones from the mamas each and every two weeks and place them on this three layered fluorescent grow lighted rack. The clones will stay on this rack for two weeks while they develop roots then be moved over to the pre-flowering table. This fan takes the heated and cooled air from the cloning room and sends it to the fruiting room. The fan has its own variable speed control. This wall holding the fan would be totally sealed, thus separating the cloning room from the fruiting room. The cloning room, which has an 18-hour light schedule, houses our mamas, develops our clones to root, and prepares them on the pre-flowering table till they are ready for the fruiting room. This door joins the two rooms. This is the back door of the trailer. We cut a hole in the barn to match it. This way our neighbors only see us go into the barn, never into the trailer. Watering the back of the trailer produces this nice camouflaging cover. This 5,000 watt generator is appropriate for auxiliary or main power supply. The seed. We will start with the seed. Given the proper environmental conditions, the seed will produce a plant similar to its parent. Select your seeds from only the best stock. Large, robust, dark, bold stripe, bulbous seeds seem to do the best. A hand lens helps us to find the best of the best among our collection. For our project, we use Afghani seeds. Some originated from seed stores overseas, while others were taken from really great buds we were lucky enough to find them in. First, we will have to germinate our seeds. I like to use a standard potting soil because it is usually more clean and free of bugs. The consistency should be such that when you compress the soil, it forms a nice solid, and yet when you press it lightly, it returns to its original form. To this approximately three gallons of potting soil, we will add approximately three gallons of coarse grain perlite. You will want to make sure you wear an appropriate breathing device and stay upwind if you are mixing soil inside. Exhaust the air through and out a window. The dust is not good to breathe. Be sure to mix the perlite and potting soil as thoroughly as possible. If you have an alternative soil mixture you prefer or would like to experiment with different mixtures, please feel free to do so. To this, we are going to add approximately one quart of fine ground pasteurized cow manure. This will give our young seedlings an additional food source. Since our soil mixture is more or less man-made, additional supplements will be required. The cow manure is then thoroughly mixed into the mixture. Here we are. To this, we will add two heaping tablespoons of horticultural hydrated lime. We want our pH to be between 6.5 and 7. The lime will help us to obtain a pH close to 7, which is neutral. If you have a problem with any aspect of this process, just keep trying and you will eventually succeed. And there you are. We are going to take these small plastic containers and fill them with the soil mixture. We will then demonstrate a few ways in which you may want to germinate your seeds. If you already have a favorite way you like to germinate your seeds, then feel free to do this. This will be a reoccurring theme we shall express throughout the video. We realize 
that not everyone has access to all the items we have for germinating, such as the felt type rooting cubes, the peat moss cups, the plastic containers or trays. Therefore, we will encourage you to find alternative items and methods that produce the same results. You will find that soda cans, Dixie cups, milk cartons, etc. are just as useful for this part of the process. Once planted, the seeds take only seven to ten days to germinate. The seeds are kept in the dark till they germinate. They are then placed under 18-hour fluorescent grow light and grow for approximately one week. Then their growing tip is pruned of approximately one quarter inch. They are allowed to grow another week and are transplanted into six inch plastic squares and placed on the pre-flowering table with 18 hour daily metal halide. They will remain on the pre-flowering table for two weeks where they will grow to the height of 10 to 12 inches and look like these plants in the background. Once the plastic containers are filled with soil, we will water them. We want to make sure that the soil is completely moist yet not overwatered. You'll want to check the moisture content of the soil a couple of times a day. In humid atmosphere, this could mean watering once every few days. In an arid atmosphere, this could mean watering a couple of times a day. The soil should be kept moist at all times, but not soggy. If you notice any standing water in your tray, immediately pour it out. If the pH of your water or soil, for that matter, is too acidic, it may be adjusted with the horticultural hydrated line. If your water or soil is too alkaline, it can be adjusted with gypsum. We will discuss pH and the methods recommended for determining pH more in detail later in the film. We'll finish our watering up here, and there you are. Our trays are almost ready to be planted. We will be adding one more item to our water, however, and that is B1. B1 is a root stimulant and transplanting aid. The B1 is mixed with the water according to directions. It is watered into the soil, giving each small square a reasonable amount. We will be using B1 throughout our process. We will use it on our seeds, our transplants, and on our clones. At this stage, we're using it because of its ability to stimulate root formation and root growth. This is a very important part of the germination process as the seedling is mostly root when it first germinates. And there you are. We are now ready to plant our seeds. We would take an object such as this pencil and make a small, approximately one half inch deep hole into the center of each square. Be sure your holes are no deeper than this. We will now place one seed into each of the individual holes. Try to make sure the seeds go to the bottom of the hole. Lightly press the soil around the top of the hole and make sure that your seed is sufficiently covered with soil. Continue this until all the holes have been planted and all the seeds have been covered. The seedlings will be covered and placed on the cloning table under 40 watt, four foot long fluorescent grow tubes. These grow tubes fit standard shop light fixtures. Once sprouted, I keep the grow tubes about two or three inches above the tops of the plants. The temperature of the soil should be kept as close to 80 degrees as possible. You may purchase small heating pads which are made to heat your trays from the bottom. You also want to make sure the seedlings have a proper exchange of air. We will discuss the air exchange more in detail. You will then want to cover the seeds with something that gives them a greenhouse type setting. Here we have our felt type rooting cubes. They are excellent for germinating seeds. We have our B1, water, our seeds, some instruments, and a notebook to help us remember our schedule. We are going to take our measuring device and measure an appropriate amount of B1. That's B1. You will notice in just a few seconds that the B1 
is a rather thick liquid. We will take the measured amount, measured amount, and add it to the water. You will then want to make sure that you stir the B1 thoroughly in the water. As you can see, that is just what I'm doing now. The B1 will sit at the bottom in a puddle if you don't mix it thoroughly. And there we are. I think that should do it. We will now pour the water onto the rooting cubes. You will notice that the rooting cubes are quite porous. The water does not spread around. It is soaked up immediately by the cubes. For this reason, we will have to put almost a gallon and a half of water in and on the cubes to get them completely soaked. I like to keep at least one half inch of standing water in the trays to help keep the seedlings always moist. The standing water must be exchanged every 48 hours. I like to keep a written record of all my procedures as it helps to me to remember what seeds are planted on what day or which batch of clones was cloned on what day. As we proceed through the project, there will be a number of different things going on at the same time. Keeping certain records will help you to keep the schedule more accurate. You will notice that I'm adding additional water to the tray. This will assure me that I have my required one half inch of standing water, which will keep my seedlings moist. That's one half inch. I will now take my seeds and put one seed into each separate square. These seeds will then be covered and placed on a three-layered fluorescent grow-lighted cloning rack. Like the other seeds we germinated, they will spend their first week or so without light. After you notice the seeds are beginning to sprout, they will be taken and transplanted to larger containers and put under 18 hour of fluorescent grow light. After about a week, the seedlings will have grown a few inches, developed some foliage, and started to develop some nice roots. At this time, the top one quarter inch of the terminal bud is pruned, and then the plant is grown for another week or so under the fluorescent grow lights. It is then transplanted into a six inch square and moved over to the pre-flowering table where it will begin an 18 hour a day light schedule a 400 watt metal halide. After about 14 days, they will have grown to the height of 10 to 12 inches and be ready to be sexed. I'm going to add just a little more water to this tray to be sure that I have enough to include my one half inch of standing water. Here we are about 10 days after we planted the seeds in the root cubes. The seeds have germinated and are ready to go into larger containers. The seedlings will be placed in the squares, almost to the bottom, but not quite. Here I am taking the seedlings and putting them into the standard soil mixture. I simply put it into a hole I made in the soil, press the soil gently around the stem, and do as many this way as I can. Whichever way you germinate your seeds, if you must handle them, be sure to do so as carefully as possible. The root hairs which are now forming are quite fragile and you will want to do as little damage to them as possible. There we are, and lightly press around the side. These squares are filled halfway with soil and will have the root cubes placed directly on top of them. Some of the seedlings have grown their roots into the root cubes themselves. I will separate the cubes with this knife. The cubes slice easily and make nice single seeded units. The cubes are my favorite for germinating seeds and seem to give me the best results. I will now place one cube into each square sitting on the soil of the half filled container. I will then add more soil until the cubes are just barely covered on some and others I would just sit on top of the soil. We, we will encourage you to experiment with the different aspects of the growing processes as we go along. 
Realizing not everyone has access to all the same equipment, this will also be a reoccurring theme throughout the film. We will water the seedlings thoroughly and place them on the cloning rack where they will begin their 18 hour a day light cycle. Then we place them under the fluorescent lights. Seedlings sprouted in root cubes may also be transplanted into these small peat moss cups. Dixie type cups, cans, etc. could be used in place of peat moss cups. Peat moss cups are excellent for starting your seedlings in also. Simply add soil, press lightly, and there it is. Doesn't that look nice? I like to transplant seedlings into these peat moss cups because when it comes time to transplant them into the six inch containers, the roots are not disturbed at all. The peat cup is planted directly into the six inch container. This is important because at that stage of growth, the roots have developed extensive secondary root system and you don't want to damage them. You will notice we keep everything in small plastic trays. This helps us to control the water in that every seedling in the tray has the same amount of water at any given time. It also makes it easier to move the seedlings from place to place. The peat cups soak up water when watered and hold the water quite well considering how porous they are. The fact that they are porous allows them to breathe, so to speak, and helps to bring more oxygen to the roots. Because the peat cups hold the water so well, I do not allow any standing water in the tray as with the root cubes by themselves. Any excess water in these trays should be poured out immediately. Once these seedlings have been transplanted to the peat cups, they, like the other seedlings, will be placed on the cloning rack and begin their 18 hour a day light period. They will remain there for approximately two weeks, during which time they will be pruned, develop foliage, roots, and grow to the height of six to eight inches. After these two weeks, they will be put on the pre-flowering table for two more weeks, this time under the metal halide, 18 hours a day. They will then reach the height of 10 to 12 inches and be ready for our special process which determines sex. We have found that it is not necessary to reduce the life period of the young seedlings in order to determine their sex. If you reduce the life period, it not only stunts their growth, but is a waste of time also. We will explain and show you this process more in detail as we go on. We will only be doing seeds once. With the seeds we germinate this time, we will determine their sexes, throw away all the males, with the exception of keeping your best for any seed production you might want to do later, and raise us a stock of female plants. This stock of female plants will be used once every two weeks to make 300 clones, and all future plants will be created by making clones. There's another nice seedling, and another. Don't they look nice? Just add a little bit of soil, press, and there you are. After being on the cloning rack for two weeks, the young seedlings will look like this. These seedlings are doing quite well under the 18 hour a day light schedule. As you can see, they have developed nice leaf growth. They appear to be rather squat, and this is because we prune them when they were about 10 days old. We placed small plastic markers in the peat cups. This tells us which seeds come from where. Your seedlings must be checked a few times each day to make sure they are all right. And I think these look all right. These seedlings were grown in root cubes. You can see their nice root systems and luxuriant foliage. They are now ready to be planted into six inch squares like those in the background. The seedlings on the left were raised in peat moss cups and are ready to be planted in the six inch squares also. What we have here is a sufficient amount of six by six inch squares 
which we will transplant our seedlings into. Next to that, we have a standard soil mixture. We have saved only the best of our seedlings. This means that over half of them were thrown away and the ones you see here are only the best of the best. Some seeds simply do not do as well as others. Only these few are good enough to become mamas. And these look very nice. Okay, now let's plant a few of these into the six inch squares, just like we've done these right here. Simply take your six inch square and fill it almost full with the standard soil mixture. Then take your seedling and putting your fingers over the top, turn it over and give it a gentle shake like this. Then carefully flip it over into the waiting container. Press firmly but gently around the base of the stem and then add a little bit of soil. Level, brush it off, and there you are. Once we have transplanted all of these, we will leave them here on the pre-flowering table for 10 to 14 days. During that time, they will grow to the height of 10 to 12 inches. Marijuana is photoperiodic. That means if you give marijuana 18 hours of light daily, it will stay in the vegetative state indefinitely. If you drop the light period down to 12 hours a day, it will simulate the time in fall when the plants would naturally go to seed. They will enter the fruiting state. If we do this to our seedlings, we will waste about six weeks and stunt our plants. What we will do instead is we will clone, that is prune the top three inches of the plant. We will take the top, three inch tip, it is called a clone now, we will take the top clone and place it into a rooting cube. We will take one clone from each parent seedling. We will tag each clone with a number so we will know which plant it came from. After the parent plant has been cloned, it is placed back under the metal halide to continue its uninterrupted growth. The clone is placed under the fluorescent grow lights on the cloning rack. The light period is then dropped down to 12 hours a day. Because of the photo period of marijuana, the clone has now received its genetic message to go to seed. After two weeks on the cloning rack, the clones will start to show gender. In the meantime, the parent seedling would have been under the 400